This is Gus Summers, and you're watching In Show Celebrities. This is the time I take every Monday when I talk about some of my favorite films and actors. This week, I am coming to you from the 87th Academy Awards setup area. Just below us is Hollywood Boulevard, and in just a little while, they'll be laying down the famous red carpet. But keeping with the, keeping with the theme of uh, Academy Awards, we are focusing on a fantastic actor who not only is nominated as Best Actor this year, but is also in a film that's up for Best Picture. That great actor, Mr. Michael Keaton. Yes, he's had nearly a four decade long career and he starred in some of Hollywood's greatest films. But first up, this movie is of course up for best picture this year. And of course, I'm talking about Birdman. Yes, this fantastic film snuck under the radar of everyone. Everyone was expecting a certain type of film. And when they watched it, you can hear everyone who's seen it, the reviews that they've given, that they say, what a wonderful film. Well, Michael Keaton stars as an aged actor who is looking to regain some of his former fame and glory. Previously, he played a fictional superhero called Birdman. He had such success with that film, but he ended up leaving it. And over the next 20 years, his career went up and down. And now he finds himself in a Broadway production, which he is writing, directing, starring in, and he's dealing with all those issues, and he's hoping that this will, again, bring him into the spotlight. But he's dealing with many casts of characters. And two in particular we're gonna be focusing on. Their work was so wonderful that they too are nominated for their roles. First up is a wonderful gentleman. Again, he's had a long career and he's up for best supporting actor in Birdman. Of course, I'm talking about Mr. Edward Norton. Uh, and next up is another young actress. She, again, is nominated this year for Best Supporting Actress for her role. Her name, Miss Emma Stone. Yes, all these dramas come to play beautifully together as you see them trying to deal with career, love, expectations, all sorts of uh, you know, dilemmas. And this is a wonderful movie. If you haven't seen it, it's definitely a must see as soon as possible because pretty soon, in just a few short days, it could possibly be the best movie. And it could also contain the best actor, best supporting actor, and best supporting actress. So it's a definitely a must see. Next up, of course, you know, uh, Michael Keaton has done so many different films and this film fits in that genre because it is a, a dark comedy, horror, funny movie that I think everyone has seen and loved. Of course, I'm talking about Beetlejuice. He plays, you know, this neither world character that comes to, well, they think is their aid to remove people from their house that they used to dwell in when they were alive. But I want to talk about the couple. Of course, I'm talking about Academy Award winner Gina Davis and Academy Award nominee Alec Baldwin. You know, both these wonderful characters, you know, played the married couple beautifully and What's great to know that it's been more than 20 years, 25, 26 years, and I just recently learned that Beetlejuice 2 will be coming out soon. So fantastic. And we have Michael Keaton back in an iconic role, an iconic role that he is so well known for. Talking about iconic roles, you know, many people have their favorite superhero. And to me, and many people, he is our Batman. Of course, that's the next film I am talking about. It's Tim Burton's Batman. You know, 
when Tim Burton brought this new in incarnation of Batman out from the comic books and away from the great Adam West uh, television series, he really brought something new. He brought him into the realm of how we know Batman today as a dark, brooding, tortured soul. And Michael Keaton definitely grabbed hold of that character. And to many of us, he is Batman. And of course, you know, the story, we all know the story. He's a, it's about a young boy who sees his parents be killed in front of him. And he decides as he grows up to do more with his wealth than just sit around and lounge, you know, in his wealth, but to try to clean up the city. And just to mention a couple of actors uh, in this great film, of course, you know, you look at it and you're, you can name so many great actors in there, but two in particular, I like to say, keeping with our theme, are, of course, we're talking about Academy Award winner, Kim Basinger, and Academy Award winner, Jack Nicholson. <laughs> yes, you know, she plays Vicky, the news reporter, that finds out, um, you know, what's going on in the crime scene and ends up falling in love with Bruce Wayne, and Bruce ends up falling in love with her and revealing who he is to her, that he is Batman. And of course, the Joker. We find out in the film that he was actually the person who killed Bruce Wayne's parents. And now this vengeance seeking becomes you know, more personal for Bruce Wayne. Again, you know, fantastic movie. Even if you watch it today, it still stands up against you know, time. It doesn't look like it was made, uh, you know, over 25 years ago. It looks like it's something that was, you know, made today. Fantastic film. Uh, one more film I'd like to mention. Of course, you know, again, Michael Keaton's done so much. And this is, this film, he's a little more sinister. Actually, not a little more, a lot more sinister. He plays a convict who is the only uh, bone marrow donor who will match a little boy who has leukemia and is dying and his father would do anything to make sure that his son gets that bone marrow the father and that great actor Academy Award nominee mr. Andy Garcia the film desperate measures he portrays the protector, the father, the one searching for the answer so beautifully. It's, um, it's touching. When you watch this film, you know, Michael, Michael Keaton plays, um, uh, you know, this convict so sinister. You know, he gets taken out of the hospital. I don't want to say too much, but, you know, he gets taken out of the hospital, tries to, uh, taken out of prison, taken to the hospital, try to escape. And the whole time, uh, you know, Andy Garcia is trying to, you know, make sure he keeps him safe and doesn't get killed by the police because he needs uh, Michael Keaton's bone marrow for his son. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but when you watch the film, there are alternate endings. I'm going to give you one ending that I like in particular because the ending that they have is different. Um, at the end, you know, they capture Michael Keaton. He gets shot. Uh, he agrees to, you know, have uh, the operation. And what I like about this particular ending is that during the film, he meets the little boy and realizes how strong the boy is. And, you know, he's brave as he kidnaps him and, and such. And then there's another part where as he's trying to run away from Andy, Gar uh, Andy Garcia, he realizes that Andy Garcia is a good man, a good father. And there's a connection there because earlier in the film, um, Michael Keaton tells him now his father abused him and he was a horrible father. Well, when uh, Michael Keaton finally gets caught and gets shot and they're taking him to the uh, operating room, there's a wonderful scene where Andy Garcia's looking at him and Michael Keaton's looking up at him from the operating table and they kind of just have this knowing, like, it's okay, I want to do this. And... Andy Garcia is basically saying, you know, thank you. And what Andy Garcia does is that as they're looking at each other, he reaches down, hugs him, and, and kisses him. And I thought, what a great ending because here it is, you know, the, these two manly men having a brotherly moment coming together to, you know, save a little boy's life. I, you know, I just like that ending, particularly myself. Of course, you know, the, the other ending's a little more macho and what have you, but, you know, again, you'll love the film. You'll love the film.
But, uh, you know, I'm so happy that I have the opportunity to, uh, you know, talk about Michael Keaton, especially during this time, you know, Oscars week, you know, the Oscars coming on. And, uh, you know, in him being in a film that is up for an Academy Award for Best Film, he personally being selected as a nominee for one of the best uh, best uh, actors. This film has garnered nine Academy Awards, so it's you know fantastic to to see uh, you know someone of his caliber get the recognition from his peers. Well. That's what we have for you this week. You know, this is um, Gus Summers, and just want to say, you know, don't forget, remember, these are great films, great films. Uh, you know, Birdman, you have to see. Beetlejuice, just for the fun of it. Batman, because it's cool. And Desperate Measures, if you want a great thriller action film. Well, Again, you know, that's what we got for you today. Uh, you know, this is Gus Summers, and you're watching In Show Celebrities. You know, this is the time I take every Monday to uh, share with you my favorite films and actors. Of course, you know, look for us every week as I, you know, come to you and give you, uh, you know, just my personal uh, reflections on the films I enjoy. And, of course, remember, don't forget, every Thursday from 1 to 2, uh, The In Show. You can visit us at theinshow.com. Click right there where it says Listen Live. And that's where I host uh, this wonderful show and, you know, bring guests on. They talk about their projects and any and all topics that they like to uh, talk about. And, of course, you know, visit us in all those great social media sites uh, Facebook Twitter YouTube uh, LinkedIn uh, Pinterest Flickr Instagram and you know and we'll be sure to look for you there as well and as always you know this time ladies and gentlemen from the 87th Academy Awards Gus has left the building